Hi, it's Jan Beta, and what I have here, as you you may be able to see, um, is an Amiga 500 board. It's actually the the board that had the green screen because of uh, one of the CAAs being um, bust. So um, this one is a working Amiga 500 board, and I recently got this um, disk drive that isn't fully working so okay here here's the drive and it has this um, shielding on it so we should be able to get that off altogether by removing a few screws here let's see <laughs> So now we should be able to just pull this out of there, I think. Or are we? Hmm. Seems to be stuck there. No. There we go. There we go. <laughs> By the way, this is uh, Chinan. Is it pronounced Chinan? I don't even know. Chinan. Chinan, made in Japan, um, FB354, which is basically a very frequently used model in the Amiga 500s especially, it's revision E, and it's supposedly um, from an Amiga 500, not from this one, I tried it on, but they are all compatible with each other, so this was made in 91, quite recent actually compared to the Amiga, which was made in 87. Um, so yeah, what we have here, and which often are culprits if these are not working, are these little caps here. There are um, revisions of this that have um, surface mount caps on the, the other side of the circuit board, but can't see any here. So I suppose these are the caps we're dealing with, and I'm gonna um, replace them altogether. And what I'm also going to do is to clean the hat, or the hats in this case, which are under here. It's a double-sided drive, other than the um, 1541, so it has a hat on top and a hat on the bottom there. Um, yeah, so we clean that with some isopropanol and replace the caps, I think. What we have here, these little things here are little um, switches basically that determine if there's a disk inside and if it's right protected. So let me show you. They just I uh, can barely see it, see it. They basically clip into this little window here. Can yeah you can see that one clipped in there and the other one um, determines if there's a disk inside so it doesn't hurt to clean those. And as you can see, here's um, how the, the window to the data opens, basically. It's quite a nice, uh, smooth mechanism. So, yeah, can't get it out from this position here. Put the camera in the way, but, yeah, seems to be pretty nice drive here. 16 volts, 22 microfarads, this one here. 22 microfarads, 16 volts. 16 volts, 22 microfarads. That's the same caps as the one in the back here. And there's also this smaller one here, which is, yeah, 50 volts, one microfarad. So we should have all of those in stock.
Okay, so now let's see. Let's put the old caps away. In the trash here. Um, let's try and clean the heads. So I try to angle this. It's not good if you um, pull on this too hard. So I'm just gonna. Uh, there you can see two heads there. I'm just gonna put a Q-tip or cotton swab between there that's soaked in isopropanol and rub very gently. And then I'm gonna um, rub it with a with a dry one to clean off any residue that might appear. Even if I have um, the IPA is quite um, the clear kind. I think it's 99.9 which shouldn't be a problem there there shouldn't be any residue so okay here we go by the way i highly recommend getting ipa in in something like this a pump uh, spray thing here so we're basically going to do this like this here i'm gently pressing but ever so gently so you don't um damage the the mechanism and I'm actually I'm turning the, the cotton swab a bit so yeah and there's virtually nothing coming off so let's try again and again a little bit of gentle moving here so yeah that is the IPA and now I'm wiping it clean with the with a clean cotton swab here. And that should do, I guess. So as you can maybe see, there's a little, um, uh, the axis that is moving the head back and forth. So um, it is lubricated. You can still see some black crusty stuff on there. We're gonna remove that and add some new um, silicon grease there which is probably which this was um, lubricated before with it's a very common lubricant yeah look at this this is what remains of the lubricant which was um, I suppose it was white or clear at some point when it was applied so you you have to carefully try and remove as much of it as you can basically yeah so I'm gonna apply some new one grease so here's what I'm using it's um it's a German apparently um, silicon fat it says um, it's for plastics and glass and ceramics and stuff like that so yeah it's, it's a pretty cheap um, generic one so I don't have any better but this um, served me well so far for my uh, refurbishing purposes here and I also used it on, on other stuff like my car and stuff and it worked quite well so let's put some of it not too much on the little axis here and um, the thing is it will you have to, don't have to um, apply it on the whole axis because the the movement of the axis will um, put it where it needs to go, basically. So I'm going to keep it at that. Yeah, I suppose that's about all we can do here for refurbishing it. Let's test it. So here's my pretty basic um, A500 setup. Just, I don't have a case for this anymore because I used the case um, for another one that I already sold, apparently. And the only other case I have is the one, the butchered Amiga, which you saw in the video I will link in here, um, is in now. He's got that. It's a better looking, cleaner case. So let's see if this drive still works. <laughs> Turning on the Amiga. And still clicking there. Let's see if it loads anything. I recently had someone uh, commenting on my um, 
1541, which is the um, Commodore 64 um, floppy disk drive, in case you don't know. Um, I had someone comment on that video that he wanted to see how that thing worked and um, see close-ups of the operation. So I'm, I'm going to do the, this um, with this one in this video. So maybe you maybe you find this interesting. So let's let's put up the, the workbench again, which worked before. So this is how the head is positioned there. And it seems to be working quite well, I think. Okay, so it uh, booted up the workbench without any problems. So I suppose this is um, working okay. Let's um, try to boot up. Um, let's first put it back in the case and um, boot up uh, Xcopy and try to see what that says about the drive. Okay, I've um, put this back together and connected a mouse and now we back on. It's a nice little convenient little drive there. I think, I hope. So I'm loading up uh, X copy and yeah. it apparently has a little fault there. That may have something to do with the little uh, switch I showed you because it said you have to replace the, the drive there. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently, yeah. If I press on the disc, it rereads it. So there's. It may just be a dry joint there or something like that. So let me show you this again. Watch the um, LED so you can probably see what I mean. I'm pressing. I'm pressing down on the on disc a bit, and there it reads the disc again as if I had reinserted it. And even if I do it ever so slightly, so I probably yeah, that's not not a good sign. I think. Let's see. So I have Xcopy running there. You probably know Xcopy if you ever owned an Amiga. Um, let's see. We can check the disk here. It seems to have some issues there, but hmm, I suppose it's working pretty nicely. So I think I give um, putting another bit of um, contact cleaner in there shot might just help maybe redo the contacts on the switches there because I think let's put this yeah, it still appears this is my uh the stuff I usually recommend, which doesn't hurt any plastics and it doesn't hurt any um, anything basically. You can put it into um, potential meters and stuff like that without hurting them. Okay, let's put some more contact cleaner in there. I think we should get the contact cleaner to the switch. And now it starts ticking when I push the switch. So I might just need a bit of a cleanup. Let's see. Still got this. No, I probably didn't do anything. Let's see. So 
So I think that already fixed it. I put a lot of contact cleaner in there. Look, if I now do the thing I did, um, nothing happens basically, which is what is supposed to happen if I depress the disc. See, and take it out and put it back in if it correctly sees it. Yes, it does. So that's definitely um, the switch was definitely the problem here. I'd say, yeah. So that fixed the drive. I'm, I'm going to test some discs randomly and see if it makes any any problems. Yeah, but this uh, seems to work fine. It has some kind of crazy fast load thing going on there, so... That's a very good sign. Okay, so this seems to work. It was a bit boring, but... Uh, yeah. That's... Uh, sometimes things are easily fixed, and I think maybe you could still get something out of this video. Um, if you'll excuse me now, I'm, I'm doing the Turrican test, which is my um, standard procedure testing Amigas in the first place. Yeah, so much for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, hope this is helpful to someone fixing a drive like this, or they are all quite similar, I think. Um, yeah, usually it's the caps or something mechanical and the dirty head. So try these things and most of the times you can um, save these. Um, yeah, if you feel the terrible urge to support me, you can um, look into the video description. Uh, there are some links to um, Patreon and stuff like that. And you can just give this a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a lot more retro computing repairs and stuff on here. And yeah, hope to see you again sometime. Bye.